Welcome. Welcome to our face study. This will be our last face study uh, before the fall, and I've really enjoyed your questions. Um, you may recall that I, uh, I sent an email out to um, all of our households and invited faith questions, uh, particularly questions that you have carried with you for a, a very long time. Um, I, I did not uh, pretend to have all the answers. I do not. Um, if you uh, have been following the Christian faith in your life and, and are aware, uh, have looked for answers either in books or online uh, to some of these very good questions you've asked, there are as many answers to these questions as there are Christian denominations, which can be kind of overwhelming. So what I do is not to give you the definitive answer, but rather to give an answer, my answer, to your question in hopes that it will uh, prompt you to think about what your answer is. And perhaps if, you're, if you say to yourself, well, now I know what Kevin thinks about that, uh, what do I think about that? And, and maybe uh, you'll go out looking uh, for more information, either online or in a book. Um, but this is our last question uh, until the fall. And it comes from someone who wrote me a, a letter. And here it is. Question. Um, is God a deal maker? Hmm. Uh, does God demand the complete compliance or obedience of God's conditions in order for us to receive or feel love? Hmm. Or, and let's put another way, does God ever compromise or accept conditions set by us so that um, uh, we can feel that we deserve God's love? Hmm. So those are the questions or question that you've put before me. And I appreciate it. And I thought about it. And um, let me use three examples to talk about the biblical, one of the, the strong sort of biblical responses to that question. The first one, I think of Moses. You may remember that Moses leads God's people out of the Pharaoh's clutches and into freedom. And once the people are uh, free, uh, they find themselves asking the question, uh, where is the land of milk and honey? Uh, we have been spending all of this time in captivity, um, believing that God would rescue us, and feeling that when that moment came, um, we would suddenly and finally uh, have for us all that we've ever wanted. And uh, there are a number of back and forth between uh, Moses and uh, people who are sort of grumbling, they're upset, they want better food, they want better conditions, they are expecting something a little bit more glorious than what they have. And what Moses brings to them is a covenant. Um, they are, if you remember, a list of, of things that God will do with the people. Um, they're commonly called the Ten Commandments, right? And, and we, in, a, in the Western world, uh, who live in the midst of Canada in 2020, uh, when we hear the Ten Commandments, we think about rules, and we think about how we must comply with the rules. And if you comply with the rules, you will be rewarded. And, and typically, people think about the Ten Commandments as a set of rules that if you, um, you, you honor, then you will be rewarded. I, I think that it's more complicated than that. I, I think that Moses is, is laying before the people a covenant, which is to say that God will be with you. And what God asks is that you will be with God, and that together, we will make uh, a community. We will make a place. We will be a people who will live in covenant with one another. And in living into the covenant, we will experience something beyond our expectations. And it won't be necessarily what those people, and there's a lot of envy that was going on, you, you, you have to understand. The envy that is going on is that Israel, or God's people, in the midst of 
escaping from slavery and being in the midst of, of, of a new reality, are looking at other people, at other nations, and saying they have more than we do. And the expectation is that if they follow the rules, they will have what others have. And Moses is saying the covenant stands on its own. You don't follow the covenant to be rewarded. You follow the covenant it, because in following the covenant, that is the reward. In doing all that God asks of you, you experience fidelity. You experience the notion of true harmony with God's way. Um, when Jesus is, is beginning his ministry and these followers give up their livelihoods and their families and follow him around, Jesus is proclaiming that he has ushered in the kingdom of God. And what, he, and what he's saying is, is that the kingdom of God is now, in this moment, as I heal people, as I feed people, as I love people, as I live in community with people, as people move from their, their, their sense of helplessness and loneliness um, into a new reality of being loved and loving, the kingdom of God is now. And his disciples say, ah, ah, ah. when the kingdom of God comes, future tense, um, how will we be rewarded, they asked Jesus. Who will be on your right hand? Who will be on your left hand? What, what, what special privilege, what reward will we receive? And Jesus says, the kingdom of God is among you. The kingdom of God is here on heaven as it is on earth. And, and it's hard, I think, for, for many of us to, 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 to understand that the kingdom of God, the covenant of God, is present when we are living into the covenant, when we accept that Jesus is present, that we are living as Jesus taught us to live. And then there's the Apostle Paul, who receives all these letters and writes all these letters to these various faith communities. And likewise, they are asking the question, we are waiting for Jesus to return so that he will usher in, again, something like a reward. Right? That we have suffered, we have uh, uh, gone through persecution, we have dealt with terrible uh, things that have happened to us, and we expect to be rewarded. And, and, and the Apostle Paul says, in serving, in taking up your cross, in, in being people who do the right thing, you experience a blessing. You are a blessing. You are taken to a different place. And my friends, I guess what I want to say is, I don't think God is a deal maker. I don't think that God negotiates with us that if you, if you um, say this prayer over here or do this kindness over here, if you do these kind of things around the margins, God will love you more. God loves you, period. It's unconditional. God's love is pouring out to you. What is asked of us is that as we receive, as we are made aware of how loved we are, how gifted we are, how special we are, that we are compelled to go out and love others. And that in living as a person who receives and gives, that we are living in the kingdom, that we are God's people, that we are living into the covenant, not because we are given a list of rules and we follow them and we negotiate with God. God, if you do this, then I'll do that. That, that we accept the gift. We accept the gift and then we give because the gift is free. And thus our offering is free. It is not a gift of conditions. It is a gift of abundance. It is the kingdom now. Thank you again for your question. Now we will hear Anne and Sean sing a beautiful hymn that I hope speaks 
to this very wonderful question. Have a great summer, everybody. Look forward to your questions in the fall. God bless.